When passion for making movies intersects with a great entrepreneurial spirit, that's where you will find Michael Christie. And that's today's takeaway. So I'm very excited about this. This is going to be a great takeaway because the guy sitting to my left here is young. He's 21. He's from Sandwich, but he is the, the noggin upstairs. He's got a <laughs> lot up there with creativity and you're going to be impressed with what you hear if I do my job well. Michael Christie, good to meet you. Good to meet you as well. So being in front of cameras is mm -hmm. nothing new for you. Um, but you are, um, you are a filmmaker, mm -hmm. you are at Wheaton College. Correct, yeah. You are also in a, uh, the middle of a process of a fundraising through GoFundMe mm -hmm. for a project that you have that we're going to talk a little bit about uh, down the road. Uh, because I want to give you a lot of props on what you're doing. Thank you so much. Um, I'm unabashedly excited to talk to you <laughs> because I think that this is some, some really good uh, stuff. And being a guy from Emerson College, you know, as we were talking about before, mm -hmm. creative types are creative types, but it's the ones that actually take that creativity and do something, and I see you as doing something. Oh, thank you. I'm just a knucklehead that has an opinion, so who knows? <laughs> I mean, sounds good. Tell me a little bit about what, um, who are you? You're from Sandwich, but you, young age, you got into filmmaking. Mm -hmm. um, it really started, I think, seventh grade was when um, my parents got me like a, a little dinky video camera and I wanted to make videos with my friends really because they had a YouTube channel and I was like, oh, that's, I want one because they all lived in this, their, their own neighborhood. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. So then I got one, started making films with them and then it kind of spiraled out of control where I was like, okay, well then if they can't hang out, I'll just make videos of myself sitting and talking and then from then on I was like, oh, I want to do narrative or like move on to this and that. And then in high school it really started where I made videos by myself or with my friends and it wasn't really anything big until 2014 when my okay. friend Josh Noonan was like, do you want to do lip dub? Do you want to help me with lip dub? Yeah. And then from there on, that kind of gave like me confidence to be like, oh yeah, I could do this like out in public and people like want to be a part of it. I saw that lip dub and that was awesome. Oh, and, and I, and I am, am fascinated. I, I've seen them before, but mm -hmm. I've never seen it this close to home. In, yeah, yeah, into, yeah. I mean, it, it's fascinating. But going back to, to, to when you were uh, younger, um, what in film and that camera, what inspired you? Was it storytelling? Is it the visual part? What, what? It started off visual part where I really liked shot composition or like lenses or cameras. I like to like fiddle with the technology. Mm. And then I really was for a while just after getting like a beautiful shot or like trying to get the prettiest shot I can. And then after that, that's when it really, it kind of switched. And I was like, well, you can watch a pretty shot for about five seconds, but you can listen to a nice story for however long it goes. Yeah. You can watch an hour and a half movie. And at the end, you'd be like, oh, it's pretty too, but you'll never be able to sit through an hour and a half of just pretty shots kind of thing. Yeah. Would you consider yourself now a filmmaker? Would you consider yourself an actor, a writer? How do you... I mean, I, I, watched, I watched your work and I saw your name as editor and writer <laughs> and director and you acted in, in these. Yeah. What's your fancy there? Um, I think it probably has to go writing, I think, is the biggest because that's where you get everything from. The story is like the heart of everything. Yeah. So definitely writing and then I'd go directing, acting. Okay. Acting is new. I think I did it in my last two films and then yeah. the feature, I'll be in it too. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when I watch um, the Buster Keaton tribute, mm -hmm. uh, and, and these are in no particular order, I know that they are in order in terms of when you made them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, when I watched the, the Buster Keaton tribute, I was struck, I kept, I, I was struck at your age mm -hmm. as it relates to the product that you were putting out. And, and being a guy that worked in radio when I was 14 years old, and I was kind of the young guy that kind of worked around all the old, older, more seasoned broadcasters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I found that when you are young and you're putting out a really good product, there's something, there's magic there. Mm -hmm. 
tell me how you came to that project and you shot it in Sandwich mm -hmm. and you used these actors. How did you do that? How did you put that one together? Uh, Buster specifically was uh, my friend Elliot, who was actually a teacher at Sandwich High School, was my advisor for my first film, Evasion. Mm. And then we're pretty close in age. I think he's five years older than me. Mm. So it started off as like, he was my advisor and then he became a collaborator and we're like, okay, like, how can we work together? And that's when we did Elmer's Theory, which was the one prior to that mm -hmm. with uh, Elliot in that. Yeah. And uh, he was like, hey Mike, I'm actually moving to Chicago. Can you take some headshots for me? And I was like, yeah, sure. And at the time I happened to be on a big Buster Keaton like flick or I don't know what it was, but I yeah. was watching like all of his films and I was taking pictures of him and I was like, wow, you look a lot like Buster Keaton. We should do a uh, Buster Keaton film together. And he was like, yeah, sure, just let me know. He's like, next year or anything? I was like, no, like next week, because you're going to yeah. be gone. You'll be in Chicago. Yeah. So then it was really, I was working here at the time, and we're doing a film festival here that's like a Cape Cod, I love you kind of thing. Yeah. And each of the people here is doing a film for it. So I was like, Paula, can I just make this film for it? And yeah. she was like, yeah, if you have the resources. So then it was really like, I feel like I have enough films out there where people start to trust you and they're like, okay, this isn't gonna be like a rinky dink, just throw it out kind of thing. Like, I feel like you're gonna take it serious. So like, yeah. I'll be serious with my time. Yeah. So then I reached out to Elliot, he reached out to his friend Jason and we kind of networked off of that. And Maeve, who is the only female in the film, yeah. was um, a high school friend of mine. So I pulled her in. And then just really Taiki and Payson, who wasn't there at the time, but yeah. we were all working together on the film just to get it out as quick as we How can. How long did it take to shoot it? Uh, it was three days. Three days. It was three days of just filming, probably three or four hours each. Yeah. I have to compliment you on um, the music in all of the work mm. that you have, uh, all, all of the work that you've done. Uh, tell me about Envision. Mm -hmm. um, how did that come about? Specifically for Buster? Yeah. It was uh, one of the biggest things was I was just watching his films and I was like, this is crazy because it's, it's from the 20s and like, you see 20s films and you're like, oh, I, like, I can't relate. Like, I never would think that's fun to watch, but like, there's just something about it where it's not the shots, it's not this crazy like dolly in or anything like that. You're not like taken aback by any of these like crazy shots, but yeah. the actors and what they're doing and how they would like trick you in the camera or anything like that. And like, it's the awe of being like, oh, this is just one take of like this entire thing that they yeah. did. And, like this guy just like flipped over a waterfall and then like got hit with this huge something or other. Yeah. And it's just like being shocked by that. And I wanted to try and emulate that. So like Elliot in the film, who's like rolling down hills and like getting hit with all this stuff or running around, we're doing it all in one take. And I just thought that like the awe there is like, oh, they did this. It's more of like a feat of instead yeah. of it being a film. And I noticed that in the Beth's Bakery mm -hmm. um, scene, you're coming in and out. Yeah, yeah. You've yeah. got the water. I mean, mm -hmm. there was more water in that scene <laughs> than I've and bread. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it it's continual. Mm -hmm. And I have a. T I'm the guy that like giggles in funerals because I'm <laughs> not supposed to, but I do anyway. Right, right. Um, it, it, you know, the, it, it was just it was just so well done. Thank it, you so it, much. It was it was very well done. Um, when you look at the other work that you've done, is there a favorite that you have? Um, favorite that I have. I do really like Buster, and then Elmer. Elmer's Theory is the one that I, yeah. I really like how it came out, and everybody that I talked to is like, oh yeah, yeah, I saw Elmer. Elmer's like my favorite. Yeah, mm -hmm. why? I think it's all character driven. Yeah. So I think like the most important thing in any film is characters, because you can watch people interact, but like plot comes second, then like I said, pretty shots and stuff like that. But if you can get someone to like a character, or to relate to a character, or to like want to see a character succeed, like you have them and everyone like the little things in the character you may not necessarily relate to them like a hundred percent but you're like oh he has trouble like internalizing or externalizing either way you're like that's I could I'm the same person yeah. and you watch that and you like put yourself in that position. Two's company, mm -hmm. three's the crowd. Yes. Um, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, I, I really enjoyed that you shot a lot of that at Wheaton I could tell. Yes. How long did that take for you to shoot? That was actually three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, so that was um, 
very quick. We would film every day after class, so it would probably be like 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. Wow. Kind of thing, and then go back to class. Yeah. And that was the last three weeks before the end of the school year. No kidding. Yeah. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Did you get what you wanted out of that? When you watch it now, mm -hmm. do you see, did it come to fruition as you originally envisioned it? It did have to, it spiraled off, not in a bad way, yeah. but it spiraled off just because of time. Like this was, it would probably take like two months to film it. Like, yeah. So we have time and I could be like, okay guys, like this is what's going to happen in this scene. This is what's going to happen here. So it came out. I liked how it came out, but there's a lot of like technical things I would have changed or tweaked. And then the longer you have a story in your hands, the more you're like, oh, but what if we did this? Yeah. And right. like with the time limit there, you're just like, this is the script. This is how we do it. And like, if we have this shot, we have to move on. Yeah. Was it harder than you thought? I mean, that's all, is that the longest, is that the longest um, film that you've made? Yeah, that was the longest film I made yeah. in the shortest amount of time I made yeah. a film. So it was a weird combination to do longest film, shortest amount of yeah, time allocated. Yeah. But um, it wasn't harder than I thought. The whole point of like doing a short film now, then like another, then another, then another, then a feature, is to kind of have it under your belt. Yeah. So like you start to notice trends and like it's nice to let people know like first day, it's gonna be rough, it's gonna be weird. Like you're not gonna know when I say, can you do it again, you're gonna think I'm mad or like, the yeah. tech guy's gonna drop a light, or I'll drop a light, because yeah. I'm usually the tech guy. Yeah. And like, you, once you learn those little secrets, it's not hard, it's just hard work. But it's not like we're doing anything crazy, but like the first day I knocked over a light, and like people are like, oh, you said that was gonna happen. Yeah, right. Like that. So what kind of director are you? Mm -hmm. What kind of, you're on the set, you got people that are there, because you, you're not just, um, um, in, in these situations, you were really experimenting. We mm -hmm. were trying to create, and in the true essence of creating art. Uh, what kind of director are you? Um, I really like to make sure that I'm not the jerk, like the jerk on set that's yeah. like mad at people, or that if something's not going right, you're like you can see it visibly in your face. I really want to have a collaborative effort because what I've noticed from at least watching films or like interviews and stuff, you always hear people like, oh, we came up with that on the day. Or like, oh, that yeah. line that like everybody quotes now, like the actor just said it and we went right. with it. And I think like having a group mind is way, way stronger than just having one guy like sit behind the controls and yeah. being like, this has to be exactly like this. You learn from every, every project? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Especially uh, Evasion, the first film. Yeah. Of being like, oh, in my head, like I just put the camera down. Everybody does a perfect performance. Everybody's mic'd perfectly and stuff. Yeah. And the next film, you're like, okay, this is like, sit down. Here's what's going to happen. <laughs> right. right. Um, I want to get into um, Paint the Eyes first. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we do that, I'm going to rattle off a couple of questions for you. Quick answers. Sure. Favorite actor? Oh, uh, I have to say Ryan Gosling. As of now, as of right now. Okay. Favorite director? Um, that's a tough one. It was Woody Allen for a while. Okay. And just, just the way he writes, I really liked his character specifically. Yeah. But now I'd have to say probably Edgar Wright. He's pretty high up there. Edgar Wright? Yeah. Who the heck's that? He does uh, like Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Okay. He has these like very, very, his films are like insanely quick. And it's not like the character is super well drawn out. Okay. But the film's moving so quick you can't look away. And like his transitions are seamless. Yeah. Which is like a super important thing, I feel like, when you go from like one location to another of like how do you move. And like his shots are just like you don't even really realize you're in the next scene till it's already almost over. Favorite movie? Uh for a while it was the movie Big Fish. Have you seen that? Directed by Tim Burton. Yeah, that's in your movie. Favorite movie? Mm -hmm. Uh Big Fish. Big, big fish. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I've seen that. Oh. Yeah, you say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That or was not you. While. You, you don't. Yeah, but Sam the, says uh, that. Yeah. Um, as of right now, I don't know. Really hard to pick one. But there's like a, cer a certain like genre which I think you could see, like some, from some of my films. You're like, oh yeah, this would fit in like this spot right there. Yeah. Um, Wheaton. Mm -hmm. I, I had told you my, my wife went to Wheaton, but I was not aware of the arts mm -hmm. side of Wheaton. Um, 
what is Wheaton doing for you in terms of, of nurturing this? It seems like it's a, it's, a, it's a good environment for you. Yeah, so what's beneficial at the same time not beneficial is two different ways is like the film projects or the film program is extremely young at Wheaton. I think it's five years old. Oh, really? So when I came in, it was like on its first year, yeah. first or second year. So like they don't, they, no one's ever shot a feature there before or really anything like my film that's 32 minutes is the longest thing that's been shot there before. No kidding. And kind of being like, I want to do a feature. My professor's like, no, you don't. And I was like, no, no, no. Like I've planned this out. Yeah. Like I, I have this down to a T, like the script's already being written. And he's like, okay, but like, it's going to be a lot of work. And how are you going to pull it off? Like on top of classes. And the really nice part about Wheaton was they were like, okay, like if you're really serious about this, you have the script, you have the actors, we'll do it where it's just your major. Like the rest of the film is just your major. So when this film is done, my major is also completed. Wow. Yeah. So I wouldn't be able to do it if I had to take like four classes a semester, but sure. I have to take, now it's counting this one, it's four, but without it, it's usually around two. And those are my computer science classes. Yeah. So now let's talk about your your motion picture. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, this is this is not a school project. Mm -hmm. This is not something that you're doing just to to gain credit or as you you said on your GoFundMe video, it's or, or in your description that it is something that you're just going to post on YouTube and hope people see. Right, right. This is big time. Yeah. What makes this big time? compared to the other work that you've done. And we're talking about Paint the Eyes First, um, a motion picture that you're fundraising for right now. Yes. When are you gonna start shooting? When are you hoping to start shoot? Uh, December of next year. Okay. Which is, uh, one of the biggest things is, like I said before with Two as a company, like time is the biggest thing. Yeah. And like, the longest I've ever had a script to like rewrite and work on was been about like two weeks. Mm -hmm. And, um, now it's been like four or five months and I've rewritten the script like four or five times before I came down here. I just rewrote it and like I'll send it to you soon. Yeah. But um, the biggest thing is time and really just getting people to be like in the mindset of this isn't a little thing we're going to turn in at the end. I'm not hoping for an A like right. this is we want to go 100 percent. So like yeah. telling the actors that and the thing I like to say is that like the difference between a super hard working student and a professional is like a job title. Mm -hmm. And I think making that like difference known is what makes it the higher level. So everyone's putting like a thousand percent in and really trying to get somewhere with the film instead of trying to get a grade for it. Tell me about the story. What is this movie about? Um, the, and the, the log line answer is it's about this homeless character named James who's an addict and is looking for a place to stay for his first winter alone because he gets his jacket stolen and he's like on the brink of uh, hypothermia and he ends up breaking into a conservatory, a music conservatory and befriends the janitor and his wife, uh, Sam. And the story is about, that's the, what it's about, but like yeah. deep down it's about like family ties and addiction and how those clash and how those coincide and how like it's super important to see someone as a person and not as an addict, which is like the driving point of this film and the character James. Yeah. Uh, how, do you, how do you put this together in terms of um, what you need to shoot it, produce it? Like what are the, how do you, I don't even know where you even begin mm -hmm. when you've got a pile of paper that has awesome <laughs> words and you can visualize it, but how do you go from paper to shoot? It's really, it's all about the team that you can get behind you. So like, as of now, I think now there's 30 students on board and it's really just being like, I need you to get the tech side ready. I'll get the actors ready. I need you to get the set ready, costumes, so on and so forth. And then it's the toughest part to explain, which, is, which I try to explain is just like, you just gotta shoot. Like the first short film that I did, it's like, well, but what about this, what about this? And it's like, once you just start recording, you're like, okay, that, that wasn't right. Like, I need this here, I need that there. So the way it's going right now is like, the script's done, done. I'm still revising it and stuff all the time. The actors and I are working about like, this is how I feel your character's gonna act. This is how we wanna act in this scene, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Working with- Do you do a read through? Yeah. Yeah. We've okay. done four or five now. And then we go like, 
scene by scene. Like, what's your motive in the scene? What's the point of the scene? What does your character want? What do they need? Stuff like that. And then you go to the tech side and you're like, this is what I want the film to feel like. And this is the equipment we need. This is the mics we need. Then you go to audio, so on and so forth. And you really just, you go to each department and you're like, this is what I see and how can we make that happen? Yeah. Because if you don't go to each person specifically, you have like 30 people's visions all clashing. And how many people do you have working on this with you? Uh, 30 students, including myself. And then there's eight faculty now and three people abroad. So 41 people currently at the time. Where are you going to shoot it? It's going to be shot both in Sandwich and East Sandwich, Lancaster, Massachusetts, and then probably like one or two scenes in Norton. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah, I'm super excited. Tell me how you're raising this money. How did you? Uh, so, so that process of department by department mm -hmm. gives you a sense of okay, here's what I'm going to need for dollars. Exactly. Yeah. How do you? How do you get that to go fund me? And and um, what are you expecting out of this? Yeah. So, twenty five thousand dollars is. It's it's for a film. It's very small, but for like. A bunch of students trying to raise that money for a film it's very difficult yeah but it's all about like I know if, like we get the whole crew on board and like they're pushing it they're pushing it yeah and like they see that like this is how hard I work the crew is the exact same we're all working this hard to make the film done get it done get it like professional as possible I feel like that will make it easy or not easy but a lot easier to fund yeah and my strategy right now has just been like reach out to everybody that you know I posted it on Facebook talk to yeah. like Specific people to share it to. I think we have like 400 people currently sharing it and just promising people that like listen I'm not gonna like Just make $25,000 out of this. None of this goes to me. It's all towards a product like yeah You've seen what I've been doing for eight years and like this is the epitome of it right now that I'm hoping that'll push me forward So there's a, a You're emotionally mm -hmm. connected into this. It's yeah. not just a Just a film right? This is this is important to you. Yeah, exactly. Um, are you are you afraid of failure? Are you afraid um, of if it doesn't work out? To a point where it's good to have that fear to push you forward. Yeah. But the film's gonna get made, which I think is the most important thing. And failure, I guess, would be like obviously if you don't raise the money, that's a specific failure. Yeah. But then. It's just another question of how can we still get this film done without this money. The, the money is like critical, obviously, yeah. because it pushes everything ahead and we need this, that, whatever. Yeah. But just, I wouldn't say not accepting failure, but just working around any possible way of like, okay, we lost this, but now we're gonna do it this way, kind of thing. You are, um, at 21 years old, you, you really are presenting a sense of management understanding, mm -hmm. business, um, you're taking your creative chops and you're actually doing something. Um, and that's inspiring. And I, th I think as, as, I, as I look at this and I'm thinking, you know, I was a kid that really wanted to take on the world in broadcasting. I wanted to be, the, do you know who Casey Kasem is? Mm -hmm. I wanted to be the next damn Casey Kasem. <laughs> yeah. And life happens mm -hmm. and things gets in the way. But it's people like you. You set a goal every summer. You wanted to make one movie. Yeah. And you made two every summer. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So you already, you set goals and you, you achieve them. Take me 10 years down the road. You're 31 years old. 31 years old. Where am I going to find you? Uh, ideally on set somewhere. Yeah. That's the dream. Making movies. Make movies, yes, okay. of course. TV? Uh, TV, yeah. yeah. Really just, I fell, I used to, like I said, I used to be all technical and then I fell in love with writing and storytelling specifically. Yep. So really any route I can take to tell a story is what I'm after, but filmmaking is, is the ideal, is the dream, but TV is also not a bad venture. Right. Especially now because TV is turning more Netflix, and more. Netflix, yeah. I mean, HBO, crazy stuff. And people will watch like yeah. four hours of something instead. Uh, you can't you can't do all that filmmaking out of sandwich. So mm -hmm. is this a New York thing? Is it an LA thing? I mean, do you have a sense as to where you want to be? And if you haven't told your parents yet, I apologize <laughs> for, you know, uh, outing you as uh, as it relates to where you want to live. But what's your goal after? Yeah, it's really 
I would say it's probably, LA is obviously the hub of everything. Yeah. New York is the close second. Yeah. But just getting out of school, pushing this film as hard as I can, but like get to LA, get to New York as soon as possible. Yeah. While you still have the momentum of like, listen, I just made this film coming out of college. We're submitting it here, here, and here, and here. Like, what can we do next? And like, how do you get it into uh, Sundance? How do you get it out there? Once the movie's done, <laughs> yeah, 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 and you got people talking about it, and you got you know kooky guys like me saying people need to watch this, <laughs> and, and I will, and I will. I'm very excited it, yeah. for this. Uh, I wish I had twenty two thousand dollars just to kind of <laughs> top it all off, but um, I, I don't have my wallet with me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but w w once it's done, what's mm -hmm. next? What do you what are you going to do with the film? That, that's exactly it. Push it to everywhere possible. How Actually, do you do that? I went to, oh, there's a, there's like a website specifically without a box where you can just like blast out to festivals. But really the festivals are the key thing because that's when people are looking at it. And if someone doesn't want to distribute the movie, you can find someone that wants to work with you and move on from there and mm -hmm. be like, hey, that, like your film was great. I'd love to get you working on this project. Or like your cinematography was great. I'd love to have you talk to me about this and just find an outlet there. But I went to Sundance actually, I think a month ago. Oh, cool. Yeah, I went How with How was friend. that? It was amazing. Yeah? And one of the best parts about it was uh, the costume designer is actually who I went with. And the film was already written and like ready to go. And we were watching these films and we're like, really the story is there. The only thing that we have to focus on is like, the film has to be technically perfect, as yeah. in like sound and visuals. Yeah. Because we have the story, and as long as you can watch it and sit there and stand to listen to the audio and watch it, yeah. the story is on par. Sweet. Yeah. So are we going to see Paint the Eyes first at Sundance? Ideally. You never know. Yeah. I, I would hope so. But Nantucket yeah. Film Festival? Yeah. So you, are there a lot of festivals? There is, well... Ones that you can submit to, there's thousands. Oh, but no there's, kidding. There's also one where it's like one guy running it out of his basement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's always one guy like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so your ask, mm -hmm. the takeaway for all of us is the, the film is being made. Mm -hmm. You need the funds to do it. You have about, th as we tape this, you have about three grand right now that's correct yep. you're looking for a goal of 25 um, after we do this interview i suspect you'll be up to fifty thousand. but <laughs> let's just stay with the 25 oh, of course um you're looking to shoot at the end of uh next year mm -hmm. uh and you got a bright future ahead of you thank you so much yeah am i collapsing it all in in uh easy to understand terms for you <laughs> that's perfect yeah awesome everything is great up on the screen, we're going to put up the um, information on how to go to GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm embarrassed to say that this is the first time I've actually seen a project on GoFundMe. <laughs> so I was I was fascinated, and I printed out all of the um, all of the different uh, rewards. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for for ten bucks for um, I, I think one, I think the highest one was basically. Um, You'll be f your firstborn child. Yeah, yeah. Will You'll be get my firstborn child. E exactly. Yeah. Um, but it's easy <laughs> to understand. So if I go on GoFundMe, mm -hmm. I'm going to easily be able to see how not only I can help you get this film made, but what in return I can get. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then as you are building your career, you're going to. I mean, you're going to have a nice film. I mean, I haven't read the script, um, but it sounds like you got a nice approach to it. Mm -hmm. And you're having fun with it. Tons, yep. And you got 40-something people working on it with you? Yeah. As long as Pace and Titcom isn't involved, I oh, think yeah, you'll no. be fine. I immediately kicked him from the project. <laughs> Please. <laughs> no way. Hey, Mike. It is, so ple it is such a pleasure to meet you. Great to meet you. And, uh, and, and I am merely a blip in, in you telling your story. But if there's anything that I can do or this video can do to help get that word out, um, to get you some of those funds and make this... This, this damn movie, I think you're, you know, that's the goal. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.